Spencer and the Vanner had ended long ago, ages ago, and yet the walls of Asgard still stood in rubble and ruin. Everybody wanted the walls to be rebuilt, but nobody wanted to take on the responsibility of doing the job all by themselves. And that's how matters stood, until one day, as Heimdall, the guardian of the Rainbow Bridge, was standing at his post, he saw a man riding a horse approach him. Stop, said Hendel. What is your business here? I have come with a plan to offer to the gods. Well, you can tell it to me, said Heimdall. I will tell it to all the gods and goddesses in Asgard or to nobody at all. So grudgingly, Heimdall led the man to Gladsheim, Odin's hall, where all the gods were already gathered. And the man stood before Odin and said, I have a plan to offer the, the gods. I will rebuild the walls of Asgard. And Odin, always looking for the angle, said, and what are the conditions? I will need 18 months to do it, said the man. And what is your price, said Odin. It is only this. I wish to have the goddess Freya as my wife. And all the gods began to shout and curse the man, and they got up from their seats, and Freya looked enraged. And then the man went on as if nobody had said anything at all. And he said, and the sun and the moon. Yes, I would like the sun and the moon and Freya as my wife. Now this was very insulting because Freya was the most beautiful, sexy goddess in all of Asgard. She was so gorgeous that no one except Odin could look her in the eye. And Odin said, you have no agreement with us. And the man said, well, those are my terms. And then a voice said, wait a minute, don't be so hasty. And all the gods turned to look at Loki the trickster, who was the one who had spoken. And he said, why don't we discuss it? Perhaps we can reach an agreement that would be to everyone's advantage. So Odin dismissed the stranger so that they could confer on his offer. And as they argued and discussed it, Loki said, we have nothing to lose by asking him to do it. Here is what you do. Ask him to do it in six months. That way, he'll never be able to finish it, and we won't have to give up the sun or the moon or Freya, and we'll still have half the wall built. <clears throat> well, everyone saw the wisdom of this, so they called the man back, and Odin <coughs> gave him the terms. And the man said, six months. That's impossible. But then he looked at Freya, and he thought, I would risk anything to have Freya as my wife. And he said, very well, I could do it in six months, but all I ask is that you let me use my horse to help. And Odin said, those were not the terms. It was you alone. And the man said, well, then there is no deal. And Odin said, there is no deal. And Loki said, wait, 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 Odin, come here. Why not let the man have his horse? What harm would that do? It's just one horse. And so... Loki persuaded Odin to go along with the deal. And they all gathered, and in, with great ceremony, the stranger and Odin swore unbreakable oaths to honor this bargain. And the stranger threw in one more little condition, which was that he have safe conduct the whole time he was working on the wall, because he knew that Thor was away in the east fighting the trolls, and he was worried that when Thor returned, from his travels, he might not see it the same way the other gods did, and he feared his temper. Well, the man was so excited that the very next morning, very early, while the new moon was still up in the sky, he and his stallion, Svadilvari, set out. And they went to the bottom of a hill where there was a copse of trees, and there were boulders and great slabs of rock sticking out. <clears throat> and the builder spread out a great net with a wide mesh and then he began to heave great slabs of rock until they were piled high when the net was full he folded it up like a sheet and he hitched the other end to his horse's harness and he bellowed out to the horse and Svadilvari began to dig his hooves into the ground and he began to 
haul all those rocks all the way up the hill until they were right at the ruins of Asgard's wall. And when the gods woke up that morning and saw how far this man and his horse had gotten, they were surprised. And then when they watched this stranger begin to very quickly shape and carve and smash and place the stones, they became a little uneasy. But they said to themselves, he only has six months from the first day of winter to the first day of summer. There's no way he'll have the wall finished by then. But the time passed and the months went by and now it was three days until summer. And as the gods looked out of their halls in Asgard, they could see that the wall was almost done. In fact, the only part left was the front gate. And now they called another gathering in Gladsheim. And Odin held up his spear for silence and said, Who talked us into agreeing to this bargain? We're going to lose the sun and the moon and our beautiful Freya and stumble around in the cold and the dark. Who came up with this idea? And all heads turned to Loki. And he said, You all went along with it. Yes, we did, said Odin, but who talked me into letting the man use his horse? And all the gods began to grumble, and Odin strode up to Loki, and he took him by the shoulders and began to shake him. And Loki said, but, but, but wait, he's, he's not finished yet. He, uh, it, it will still be to our benefit. We, we, he's not finished. And Odin said, Loki, you will see to it that this stranger does not finish the wall by summer's day, or you will forfeit your life. And Loki said, I swear, I swear that he will not finish the wall no matter what it costs me. And he left. <clears throat> now that morning, it was almost summer's day, and uh, the stranger and his horse, Svadalvari, were working down at the copse, and they were, he was getting ready to haul up another load of rock, and he was in a very good mood. He knew that he was going to get everything that he had asked for. And he began to whistle a tune as he worked. But then there came a sound from the copse of trees, and out of the trees sprang a beautiful mare. And in the moonlight her flanks shimmered. And Svadalvari the stallion saw this mare. <laughs> and then the mare danced up to Svadalvari and began to prance around him, shaking her tail. And then she turned and began to trot towards the copse. And with one inviting <laughs> whinny, she disappeared <laughs> among the trees. And now, <laughs> Svadalvari pulled and strained and pulled, and he gave a great thrust, and the harness snapped, and he galloped off into the trees after the mare. And the, the stranger began stumbling after him in the dark, cursing, Come back here, you bloody horse! But all night long, the Two horses sported among the trees with the stranger stumbling around and unable to catch them. So in the morning when he went back and trudged up to the Asgard's walls, all he had to work with were some stones that were already there. And he took one look and he knew there was no way he was going to finish the wall on time. And his rage exploded from him, and he began to change and grow bigger and bigger. And in his rage, what should be standing at the walls of Asgard but a towering rock giant? For that is what he had been all along, in a towering rage. And he began to curse at the gods, saying, Oathbreakers, you're nothing but a gang of a gang of gods and a brothel of goddesses. And he raged and raged, and everyone said, He's a giant. He's a giant. He's a giant. The, the pact is broken. We don't deal with giants. Where is Thor? Somebody get Thor. And in no time at all, Thor came up to where the giant was raging and paid him his wages. But they were not the sun and the moon. No, Thor raised his hammer and smashed it down on the giant's head and it shattered into thousands of pieces. And he, that very day, ended up in the endless cold and dark of Niflheim. Now, no one saw Loki for the next several months. But one day, he suddenly appeared, sauntering across the Rainbow Bridge, leading a sprightly colt, <laughs> a colt with eight legs. 
<laughs> and he led it into Odin's hall, and Odin praised this colt and admired it greatly. And Loki said, Odin, it is yours. Take it as a gift. I bore this colt as it will bear you. This is Sleipnir, and he is swifter than any horse in the nine worlds, and he will take you over air and sea and flame and even to the land of the dead and back. Odin stared at Loki <clears throat> for a long time, and then he said, Welcome back to Asgard, trickster. That's him. <laughs>